Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis and today we're going to be talking about the overall crypto market. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things because I'm not even going to ask you guys to relax because I'm sure that a lot of you are on edge and uh, I'm definitely going to be talking to you guys about the you know worst case scenario today and I'm really kind of discussing to you guys where we currently are. So yesterday we did see you know Tether do some crazy moves. Um, as you guys do see on the last seven day chart over here, it came down. It was like at 90, I think it was like 94 cents or so. Yeah, like 90, almost five uh, cents. Obviously, they got that back on track. Um, we have been seeing a ton of, you know, movement throughout the altcoin market. Uh, we've been seeing ApeCoin jump in 40% today, which, you know, hey, it is what it is. Um, I'm not taking any real major positions here. I did ape into uh, Luna today with $250. I could talk about that later on in another video and talk about why I took that position and really kind of discuss to you guys exactly the risk on taking something like that in terms of a position. Um, and I've always said, you know, that is a gamble. Do not put in anything that you cannot afford to lose on something like that because, hey, we don't know where that is even going. Um, but let's dive in and let's talk about a few things. So indices... Obviously, today, having a rough day, we do see the Dow Jones down 410 points. We see the NASDAQ down 102 points and the S&P 500 down roughly 43 points. Obviously, these are not closed out. There you guys have the refresh. Uh, you guys can watch these more uh, closer today. But obviously, yes, things are looking pretty rough in terms of the traditional stocks, right? Now, uh, we've also been watching the dollar. The dollar is continuing to make new highs. In fact, uh, if we go to the monthly chart real quick, uh, let's go back in time. You know, we are at the highest point in time on the dollar since going back as far as literally 2003. So when we take a look at where we currently are right now, I mean, things are looking pretty rough on the dollar um, compared to what we are seeing in stocks and even crypto. So as the dollar is continuing to ride up, we are most likely going to see more downtrend within the market. I'm going to be talking to you guys about where we currently are on that. Yesterday, I did do an update on where I foresee this market actually heading. Um, and I also did talk about the entire situation with even Tether and stuff like that as well. Um, but with that in mind, let's just dive in and let's talk about uh, what is happening around crypto. So I've been seeing a massive amount of, you know, bearish, you know, news articles and tweets around crypto. We do see Bloomberg opinion here. Crypto has been having a horrible time. A massive sell off in cryptocurrencies wiped over $200 billion of wealth from the market in just 24 hours. It's big enough to risk in, uh, infecting the non-crypto markets too. So obviously, yeah, we're seeing some pretty big moves in crypto, specifically bearish moves. And this is also also going to lead to some bearish trends within news articles. In fact, we see New York Post, crypto investors panic during market bloodbath. I will lose my home. Uh, we also see here, um, sorry, let me close that. Uh, panic in the crypto market has uh, Jeanette Yellen's attention. Uh, we also see over here, uh, or Janet Yellen. I know that you guys butch uh, told me that I butchered her name. I know. I apologize. Uh, Dogecoin and Ether sink faster than Bitcoin as crypto crash intensifies, right? Um, and we also even seen Forbes. One trillion crypto meltdown. Huge crash wipes out the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, XRP, Cardano, Solana, Terra's Luna, and Avalanche. And uh, we even seen Coinbase loses half its value in a week as crypto slumps. So we're seeing a ton of these, you know, fearful articles being pushed. Obviously, do they make sense right now? Yeah, they do. But we've also seen this in the past as well. Um, and I'm not going to say that this is exactly like 2013, 2014 or 2017, 2018. No, I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying usually as you know, we see massive bearish trends in the market and sentiment around crypto basically disappears to, again, a bearish standpoint. You know, that's when everybody has given up. They're saying, all right, it's time to hibernate. The bear market's here and we're calling it a day. And could the bear market be here? 100%. I've discussed this even in terms of Bitcoin, right? We go back to, you know, November here, right? If we are in a four-year cycle, we already seen our topping point. We already seen our topping for, uh, point for Bitcoin and we're now going even lower. In fact, um, on Bitcoin from here, you know, if we do an 80% correction, you're looking at roughly like $13,000. In fact, it will be the monthly candle 
uh, bottom of the November 2020 candle, which would be exactly $13,800. And if we did see this, think about your altcoins getting absolutely decimated as well, because think about it like this, right? So let me go to the dollar chart just so that we can pull up uh, Bitcoin dominance. So here is Bitcoin dominance sitting at roughly 44%. So this is sitting at 44% overall in terms of the market. And uh, if we talk about altcoins getting decimated by something like Bitcoin, Bitcoin will have the major demand over the market at that time. So if Bitcoin drops 80% from its all-time high, uh, currently from here, you know, our current level down to this uh, range would be about a 51% drop. And, you know, altcoins will take another leap of faith either, you know, you're talking about 60 plus percent from our levels now, uh, leading to a massive sell-off point. And I've addressed this, but I don't believe that that is the case. I've said this, right? If you believe in the four-year market, yeah, our topping point's there. But I actually believe that we are in a lengthening cycle. And I've addressed this uh, yesterday as well. And I've talked to you guys about it during my XRP video. Um, right now, it looks like Bitcoin has bounced off of the uh, monthly EMA uh, down at roughly the 200 EMA at currently 25.7K. Now, was it a significant jump? I mean, it was quite a little bit of a jump. I mean, if you go to the four hour range, uh, here is the four hour range. You guys seen us kind of wick down to that point, uh, having a nice rebound uh, little jump there as well. But again, when we take a look at this, we also lost the weekly uh, 200 EMA on uh, this move down. As you guys do see, this was sitting at roughly almost 27K. It was 26.8K. Uh, we lost it. It was kind of concerning because liquidations, uh, there was a ton of liquidations that were happening around 27K. I'm honestly surprised that we didn't see lower. Um, I honestly thought that we were going to see much, much lower. But is this a possibility? Could we go down even more? 100%. Or we could range within this, you know, area and have that nice impulse back above 33 to 34K for a nice reversal. Um, to me, I'm still buying right now. Um, I bought, you know, a few positions. Link was one of the most notable ones that I've taken. I've told you guys about it so many times. It's because I do believe in, you know, what Link could do um, in terms of the percentage gains. Um, I've gotten stopped out of my Link position multiple times, and I've actually lost money on my Link positions, even going back to 2020. And I've talked to you guys about that. Um, but when we look back in time, right? So uh, I've addressed the, you know, drops back in 2017 before the all-time highs. And I've also addressed, so let me go back to the Bitstamp chart because I believe that I still have the Bitstamp chart uh, showing you guys this. So here we have the Bitstamp chart showing you guys a 75, almost 76% drop in price before running up 1,700%. And we've seen drops like this even in the 2017, 2018 timeframe, uh, but they weren't as deep. Like we've seen, you know, a few like, you know, here's one, um, you know, before the upside rally. I mean, honestly, 2017, 2018 was just like almost a straight up game, if you will, uh, with slight pullbacks along the way. But this was a 40% correction, um, you know, followed by, I think it was like, roughly this candle here, you know, this was like, it, you had like multiple 30%, 40% corrections on the way up. Uh, most notable, this correction here, right before, you know, we actually moved up. This was like roughly 38%. Um, but we didn't really have a sharp decline in price, similar to what we've seen back in 2013, 2014. And most notable, what we have been seeing right now. Uh, because currently, and let me get um, some of these tread lines off the chart real quick. Currently, if you look at where we are now in terms of this dropping point, this is roughly a 60, almost 3% drop. You go back to the summertime, you know, this was a 55% drop. I mean, even if you look at, you know, the March of 2020 dropping point, this was a 72% drop before, of course, we rallied. We've seen significant drops like this where people thought, you know, it was the end of the world before we've seen, you know, 16 plus 100% uh, moves, which could this technically be our rally from, you know, 2013, 2014. Yeah, it, it could 100% be possible. I mean, even if you go off of the all-time highs that we just recently seen, this was 1,725%. This was a 1,740% run. So this is why I say like, you know, could we have seen our topping point? Yeah, 100% if we are following the four-year cycle, which I know that everyone does really believe in the four-year cycle. That's totally fine. I personally think that we are in a lengthening cycle and I have been taking, you know, my positions. I put my money where my mouth is and I've bought multiple positions. If I do lose everything, hey, I lose everything. 
This is the game that we play. This is a very volatile asset class. But I'm not telling you guys to follow me. In fact, if you guys don't want to, you know, buy in or anything like that, that's totally up to you. I'm not telling you guys to, hey, go ahead, ape in right now. Right now is the best time to buy. I'm just saying if we are in a lengthening cycle and if we are about to have that repeated, you know, time frame run similar to 2020 uh, in terms of March or even similar to the 2013-2014 time frame, then we are looking at some pretty significant gains. Um, I've outlined my, um, you know, topping points for Bitcoin, if we're talking about from the bottom range here, even you know, even look at like 100k, right? 100k would be almost a 300% run. And I've no, I, I know that people were saying like 120, 160, 200k, 250k. I mean, there's some pretty significant numbers out there that a lot of people are calling for. Honestly, I don't really need Bitcoin to go too high uh, in in order for me to be you know happy about this market. Honestly, even if we outstretch to the 1272, which would be like 90.3K, I'd be happy with that. Um, but you guys definitely see the 1618 up there at about roughly 127K. I would be perfectly happy with that outreach as well. Um, I know that a lot of people have been calling for 200K plus. I just don't foresee that happening. But of course, I'm welcoming any sort of price move. Now, let's talk about altcoins, right? Because altcoins, in my opinion, if we do continue to see downside here, they will get decimated. In fact, XRP is one of the most notable ones on this channel that I've talked about a lot. Um, if we're talking about from our bottom range, this would be an additional almost 30% drop here. Uh, this is the range that I'm actually looking at, you know, 24 cents as being our major, you know, level to go down to. Uh, could we come down all the way to roughly, you know, this bottom range here to test literally almost 11 or it's like almost 10 and a half cents. So almost 11 cents. Yeah, 100%. If, of course, the bear market is here. And if we talk about how you know much of a drop this is from its high back in April, well, it's a 94% drop, which is the typical range for altcoins to drop down to in the bear market. And uh, like I said, I, I, I've I've taken positions on this one at 40 cents. I got my stop loss hit at 38 cents. Um, I did not buy just yet. I'm actually waiting to see if we do go lower, um, but I got stopped out of this one because I was actually expecting Bitcoin uh, to hold up much uh, better and actually have a much better impulse back to 33k, um, more so even back above the summer lows. So I'm waiting to see if that is validated until I do take some heavy positions, like for example, the XRP position or even my H bar position, right? Because H bar, uh, one that I did not expect to lose this mo much momentum on, has come down significantly from its highs. In fact, this has came down already 92%. And like I said, if we do see that massive drop on Bitcoin, this would come down a lot lower. I mean, we're talking about like 95% all the way to the bottom range here to almost three cents. If of course we are in that bear market. This is why I said you guys do not need to just go throwing your money in until you do see a nice reversal. That's when you really kind of want to see and you want to buy in. But of course you also, you know, run the risk of buying higher than what, where you could have. In my opinion, you know, a lot of these prices, like for example, like this four and a half cent zone, was like a no-brainer move to buy. I mean, it obviously wasn't just a slight wick. It could have been a scam wick, but you're looking at still, you know, almost a 40% drop on your investment opportunity down there. That's why I always say like DCA is not too bad. Um, but this has, you know, came down and tested some significant lows. Um, we could most likely come down lower. I mean, on the weekly, there's really no support range that we came down to here. Uh, it looks like we, you know, are trying to test low uh, support at about like eight, you know, cents, but Again, I'm not really looking at this holding significant support zones at all around these ranges. I mean, even on the daily candle, you know, we came, I don't know if this is actually, you know, a legitimate wick. Let me see if, um, let me see if Binance itself has a different, so we're actually already on the US chart. So let's go to the, all right. So yeah, I mean, this looks like it's a pretty significant wick, but this one was seven cents instead of four cents like the other chart. So, you know, if we're talking about this, you know, a lot of the ranges that we did test on this, you know, we tested lows going back as far as roughly like, you know, January of 2021. But again, we've already pumped out of there in terms of July or uh, December and January of 2021. So, you know, if we're looking at the current range on um, HBAR, we could go lower. In fact, we could go much lower on this. So I'm waiting to take some heavy entries on some of these positions, but I definitely did think that, you know, HBAR down at, you know, roughly like seven cents. Um, I think that that was a little bit oversold, but again, you know, we are still uncertain on Bitcoin. So before I even talk about altcoins fully, I do want to see Bitcoin have a strong reversal here. In fact, I want to see it back above the summer lows and I want to see it actually close above the summer lows. 
Um, also, in terms of Q&T, Q&T is also one that I'm actually eyeing at getting to some lower points, specifically almost $44. And we actually, we're not exactly on the bottom of that candle. So here we have, uh, so it's like $44 exact. That's where I'm eyeing this. And again, if we go off of the top range for this, this has been down significantly already 88%. If we come down a little bit more, this would be almost 90% on Q&T. Again, fundamentals do not matter when you go into a bear market. And technically speaking, you know, we're, we're basically seeing altcoins at bear market prices. But again, if we talk about where Bitcoin is with Bitcoin dominance, we could see much lower on a lot of these altcoins. I'm, you know, averaging in a little bit on some positions like Link. I told you guys, I, I've taken positions on Link. I, I got stopped out multiple times on Link. I got stopped out at roughly like it was like seven dollars and ninety cents uh when we you know dropped below my eight dollar range in fact i was actually looking to see if this was going to hold at seven dollars and fifty cents got stopped out there as well um i've took i've taken some positions even at seven dollars those i did not get stopped out at on at all so i'm actually down on those almost you know 40 cents um, I've bought a little bit down at five, like the $5 range. It was like, I, I didn't get the bottom. It was like $5 and 50 cents, I think, or something around that area. But again, there's no support in mind on the weekly chart here, even on the monthly chart, right? There's no support here. So I'm actually watching to see where this could come down to and test. Um, I'm looking at a, a roughly, you know, this range of like, you know, $4 and 71 cents. Um, but again, you guys do see you know, there's not a significant, you know, support zone here. There is a few candles back there that closed around this range, uh, which is why I'm saying like, I'm hoping that this range actually does hold. If not, then I'll, I'll have a stop loss save or so at like, you know, $4 and 60 some cents, uh, just to kind of preserve capital to buy even lower, which the lowest point that it could go from here would be like roughly almost like $3 and around like that. So I'm like looking here. So let's go back to, let's go back to the weekly real quick and let me zoom out. So Again, if we do lose that $4.70 range, you know, I'm looking at some significant lows. We're looking at, you know, there's not a lot in terms of the weekly support here, but it, it would be like a, roughly around like $3 and 90 some cents to almost like $4. So it, it's not too much lower from $4 and 70 cents. Like I, I would just look at that as like almost like an aping level. Um, but we could go much lower on a lot of these altcoins, but the upside on a lot of these altcoins as well are fairly good. But how long do we have to wait until those upside targets are actually met? That's the thing. Cause if we go into a bear market and we are in a bear market right now, you know, you're looking at roughly almost two years from now. So again, you know, if you are looking to, you know, you know, buy some positions average in at best. Um, just make sure that you know that Bitcoin can come down a lot lower. In fact, if we do lose this range, like I said, look at around that 13K level, 13.8K, which by the way, for everyone calling like 10K and you know lower, I don't foresee those prices actually being met. Like I said, Bitcoin usually only, like even if we go back to like the 2017, 2018 high and we go to the bear market low, like this came down. Let me get uh, the exact topping point here. So this came down about like 84%. Um, 84% would bring this down roughly. I mean, it could have come down a little bit lower because we have a lot more individuals here. Sorry, I'm actually moving the chart down. Um, could we come down a little bit lower because we have a lot more individuals here? Yeah, sure. But, you know, 84.82% would be like roughly around like 10.5K. So I, I foresee, you know, 10K holding, if anything, if we do lose that 13K area, but we'll most likely hold this support range that we, you know, built on two monthly candles in a row, almost three monthly candles in a row at roughly like 10.7K. So I figured I'd l let you guys know about that, where I am currently. Like, do I think that this price action is extremely bearish? Yeah. Uh, and the news articles are definitely hyping it up in terms of, you know, bear a bearish time in crypto. Um, this is the time where I actually get a little bit excited. I do like when we see price action move in either direction. Um, I like the excitement in the market. Um, in my opinion, you know, I will buy here. I, I've been averaging in because, you know, I think that a lot of individuals are uncertain where we are headed. Like I said, I will de-risk myself fully if we do lose 
this range here uh, because that means that we are going much lower and we're not going to hold that 20k line. Uh, we will most likely go a lot lower, which at 20k line, they're talking about like 19.6k. I foresee us breaking right below that because there's going to be a ton of liquidations that happen. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are on this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.